Dave Chan. This is Honk. I'm your host, David Blue, the most highly paid man in television. And today I'm driving a 19... I should say tonight. I'm driving a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. One of the most iconic American cars of the 70s. This particular example has got the 500 cubic inch V8 in it, which is, um, big. As this car is very big. In fact, it doesn't fit in my driveway. I've only spent, like, a few hours with this car. It's certainly a, an experience, a very special experience. It was a warm day at the top down, and that was cool. And uh, since then, the temperature's dropped 40 degrees. And it's snowing, weather too. How to describe this car? Well, it's big. Everything about it is big. The sensation of driving it is you are effortlessly in command of an extremely huge object. The hood is the size of the Atlantic Ocean. As you're driving, you just see that emblem, and you control the destiny of that huge hood and that emblem through this steering that's so ridiculously light. Uh, this three-ton car, it's just such a unique driving experience. Uh, there's absolutely no feeling in the steering. Um, it is, it's essentially a tractor steering. Uh, there's, there's no feeling. It doesn't really have a tendency to center itself. I mean, it kind of does, but most of what the steering that you do is, is by sight, um, which is very agricultural. It's noisy in here, very noisy. The wind noise is tremendous. The top leaks. I'm actually surprised by the amount of noise. Uh, I did not expect it to be quite so noisy. I wouldn't say this is a good car in the sense that it's not pure quality, it's not pure durability, it's not 100% precision, um, which is never the intention, of course. But as an interesting car, as an experience, it is like nothing I've ever experienced. It is full of personality and full of character, and it is so utterly special. It is a work of art. This particular car is in this, this beautiful white and it just, uh, with this red leather interior and, and these white leather seats, it really is beautiful to look at. I'm trying to find the words to describe this car. I've never agreed with Cadillac's design language. I've always thought it kind of mean. And this is the third time I've said this today, okay? So, in comparison, in comparing this car with the Lincoln Continental, two American luxury coupes in the 1970s. The peak of the huge era. The Eldorado says, I'm going to kill you. The Lincoln Continental says, don't screw with me or I'll kill you. That's the third time and hopefully the final time I will say this, say that today. Because it's going to start becoming a really big cliche. But. I never expected to fall in love with this car, but I think I certainly have. Not as necessarily an, an object of desire, I don't know if I want to own this car, but just as an experience, there are at once so many things, so many inputs, and so little that it just makes for a tremendous ride. One thing it does succeed as, succeed at, rather, as a large luxury car is it, uh, it absorbs bumps very well. Unfortunately, it also feels like it's going to fall apart. Um, and sounds like it. But that's kind of to be expected. This is an all original car. Absolutely no modification whatsoever. You know, it's 40 years old, almost 40 years old. So to expect it to be perfect is unrealistic. It's not those things, it, it's, it's, it's flaws, if you can call them flaws that make it so great, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just got, a, it's got a lot of character. I'm not good at this job, I should quit. Driving with a 500 cubic inch V8, even in a three-ton car, you'd assume to be 
uh, you notice the presence of the engine. But with this car, the velocity changes comes in, in such a, a relaxed manner. I'm not being pushed along even when I urge it to, to speed up. I don't feel any of the G's. It's kind of lethargic. And yeah, it is, it is lethargic. And, and it's just, you simply go faster. There's no, I don't really feel much of it in here. The only indication that I have of the velocity increasing is this brilliant horizontal speed speedometer uh, and the wind noise. And that's it. I think if this car were a coupe, uh, it would probably have significantly less noise. I think, I think if I was going to use this car today as a luxury car, uh, this particular car, the noise would put me off a little bit just because it's going to be kind of annoying on long trips. But, as a collector's car, I mean, as a, as a thing to be appreciated, it is, it is amazing. There is a profound lack of urgency in this car. It seems like no matter where you need to go, no matter how late you are, to whatever oil executive meeting you're going to, 30 miles an hour is all you need.